Marry the best man you can find, regardless of his marital status. I never had sex, but when I wanted to. My husband has seven wives. Welcome to the Live with Lindy show. I'm the sixth. That's what kills regular marriages, being on top of one another. Alex has always been a controversial person. Everything they're doing is their own choice. You think it's a good idea for you to be going to that? I'm not doing this for me. I'm doing this for my children. The relationship between the Joseph wives is stronger and stranger than we thought. I possess the power to inflame him. Sometimes I wonder if we're crossing the line here. He told us all we were going to be widows someday. It's going to be really hard. All right, we're out of here. Load up. Last time on Eyewitness. I am what is called in these parts a polig. <laughs> We've just spent our first week with one of Utah's most notorious polygamist families, and we're getting a crash course on what it's like to live with eight wives and 21 kids. This is Austin, my uncle. You can tell he's a brat. But our story quickly became more complicated when we found out that the man who's at the center of it all, Alex Joseph, is dying of cancer. I'm just afraid they're going to tell him the chemo's not working at all, this new treatment, and, and to forget about it. We had spent a fair amount of time with Alex, but didn't feel like we were seeing the man his wives kept talking about. The charismatic Alex, Alex the renegade, Alex the philosopher. When we mentioned this to his wives, they just kept saying, wait for the weekend. Well, the weekend is here. It's Saturday morning, and the Joseph compound feels like a church parking lot. People are here from all over the country filing into Long Hall, the meeting house at the center of the Joseph compound. They were here to see Alex, but it was all he could do to get himself out of the house. This um, side effect is almost wore off, uh, I'm hoping. What side effect is that? From this chemo I just took before you guys got here. What's I the side effect, that you can't sleep well? Oh, hey, no. Hot chemicals coursing through your veins, dry heaves, stuff like that. I don't like to think about it all that much. Alex founded this group. He calls it the Confederate Nations of Israel. As far as we could tell, they were part religion, part political party, and part polygamy support group. When I first learned about the confederacy that Alex leads, I didn't know what to think. Here was a group of people who don't want to join a traditional church, don't want to join a traditional political party, and basically don't want anyone telling them how to live their lives. They're all rebels, and though he may not look like it now, Alex is their renegade leader. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All right, well, let's go out and see the sunshine. It's beautiful out. Ooh. Over paper moon. Alex got people that he really likes, and he has a friendship and a bond between a lot of people. But some of them are kind of strange to us, but some of them are really close friends and really nice people. You'll be able to pick the weirdos out from the good people. Just ask me, and if you think they're, you know, if you're kind of in between, tell me. I'll, I'll tell you. It was pretty obvious that Willie, a TV executive from Salt Lake City, was part of Alex's inner circle. I met Alex in 1986. I was on a little recruiting trip for the Libertarian Party here. And I came down because I'd, I'd heard of Alex, I'd seen him on TV a little bit, and I thought, he should, this man should be a libertarian, he's pretty radical, he's, you know, a rebel, independent type. David, a Native American from Oklahoma, is an even older friend. Alex has always been, in the public's eye, and even individuals, a controversial person. I think even people who have found disagreement with him over the years consider themselves somewhat enlightened by their experience with Alex. 
when you meet someone like that, it's, it's encouraging. We have all kinds of people here that come to these meetings. We have polygamists, of course. There are single people, there's gays, there's, there's all kinds here, really. <laughs> Listen, the reason I've taken this time here today is because I feel that all of you here are in dire danger. Throughout the morning, different speakers shared the floor. But when Alex walked in, you could tell he was the reason everyone was here. In Scotland, they have an expression. Let's see if you get this. Ah, alas, poor Frickett is dead. Long live Frickett. And what that means simply is, you can kill all the troublemakers in the world, but there'll most certainly be somebody to take his place. <laughs> all right. Oh, it was so very clear that Alex is the center and the leader of this entire community. But despite his brave face, I know the chemo is taking its toll. He's swallowing his pain for these people. The meeting didn't last as long as we had expected. But this guy is strange so much. <laughs> it's rather sobering to think, you know, that Alex may not be around much longer, but I think the Confederacy will continue for, I hope, a long time. Oh, well, thanks, Will. I don't think we'll have a personage like Alex. Uh, I don't see any in the <laughs> waiting in the wings that could really pull everything together the way he has. It'll be different for sure. Everybody seems to have a different way of coping with Alex's imminent death, including his wives. I made my commitment with my husband, and I'm not interested in making another commitment to any other man. Anyway, I'm not. I just met this person, and she says, she says, so will you guys just find another man? <laughs> I said, I don't think so. Have you ever guessed? In the world, we would want to accept second best? I don't After think so. We're shopping. Remember that guy that called oh, yeah. and volunteered? Yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay. I understand that Alex is going to die. Who could you like? Was he <laughs> there? His harem has lost it. He's losing its head. Yes. So, <laughs> I'm a good guy. Yes, I'm sure you are. Would you please hang up? Where did you get this number? I'm going to have to change it. <laughs> I wouldn't say half the things I said if I didn't know this was going to air until I was gone. We have too much good to remember. Yeah. We do. And why, and why would we want to complicate our life? I'm, I wouldn't nope. want to complicate my life more than it's already been complicated. <laughs> I made my commitment with my husband, and I'm not interested in making another commitment to any other man. Not even for 24 hours? Not even for 20, <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> that would be an Alex comment, eh? <laughs> That's what I'd call a quickie, you know, I'm, I'm not impressed. <laughs> I'm not. Okay. It's intense to see Alex's wives cope with the thought of life after he's gone. It's hard to tell if they're being cold or if they're just really strong. Whereas the Josephs were losing a family member, their next door neighbors, the Rankins, were preparing to gain one. Karen Rankin's husband, Raymond, is now looking for a second wife. I was just telling me how you always tell me about the good stuff about plural marriage, and I want you to tell me about all them nasty, jealous feelings that you had before that. When you get over the jealousy and the possessiveness, is I wouldn't go back to monogamy for anything. Not for anything. Why? Because you have, you have a friend, you have a helper, you have a baby maker, you have all kind of wonderful things that, that I value in life. Why does your husband want to have a bunch yeah. of 
I wouldn't even know how to answer that question. I knew you would ask me that question, actually. So I really feel for Karen Rankin. I can just imagine how she must feel knowing that eventually she's going to have to start sharing her husband. I don't know. I think you should probably ask my husband the rest of that question. Is funny like? I have a question for you. <laughs> when I was talking to Karen, I was asking her why you wanted to take another wife. Uh -huh. And she said she wasn't exactly sure, and that I should ask you. And that you should ask me. Mm -hmm. That's the right answer. <laughs> a lot of people look down on polygamy for a lot of different reasons. And uh, to me, it's a very secure family environment. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's a really good environment to raise children in. I know because I was one of them. And uh, God, there are just a lot of reasons. Uh -huh. um, they, I mean, Karen's told me that she understands why you want to do it, but she is very nervous and and, and just has a lot of well, feelings jealousy, of jealousy. is a, is a very strong feeling. And do you, do you understand that? Yes, I do. I do understand that, but I also know that nothing good came of it. Mm-hmm. What about if she were to take another husband? Would you be jealous? Absolutely. So men are allowed to be jealous and women aren't? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. That's what you're hearing? Well, it just seems to be. You have a man and a woman. Obviously, God intended something when he created man yes. and woman. All right. He intended for them to be together to procreate, okay? Now, if you have a woman with more than one husband, mm -hmm. okay, you're defeating that purpose. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? I'm asking you, can you see that? Yes, but at the same time, if you have a man with, I mean, a woman can have however many kids she can have, and she can, eight wives, can have 40 kids, but eight wives with eight separate men would also have 40 kids. True. It's just whether you want all those kids to be yours or someone else's. <laughs> no? I rest my case. <laughs> okay, so you want to have them all to be your kids. I'm a family man. Yeah. I love children. Did she know when you met her that you were planning to... I told her uh -huh. as soon as we met. Well, and obviously, you know, uh, she was thinking that she could probably change me, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, the lion roars, you know, and what's going to change that lion's roar? Alex's wives are teaching us, and Karen Rankin, a thing or two about jealousy. We always have tried to make sure that Alex had his own bedroom. Here. Would either of you like to have a cup of coffee? I would love a cup of coffee. One of the things that I have to say has surprised me is that I really genuinely like these people. And it's causing a bit of confusion within me because I've always felt that polygamy is wrong, or at least that it was one more way that society dupes women. And you're just kind of scared of the unknown, right? But what I want to tell you is, OK, you got yourself a good man, some beautiful children, and you're going to just take one day at a time and be more than just fine. I hope so. <laughs> what it is is insecurity. And you know what your short points are. Mm -hmm. And you know somebody else coming in is going to be new and that your husband's going to be more patient with them. And um, there's going to be more expected of you. And you're going to get all the work and she's going to get to be doing all the playing. All day we've been talking polygamy with the Josephs and the Rankins, and it seems that the conversation keeps coming back to the same thing, jealousy. You know one of the most crushing things for me was reading in his journal, I just married oh, yeah. Elizabeth, Carmen Elizabeth Wheeler, the most beautiful girl in the world. This, oh, you know, because I thought she was too. <laughs> when Bodica came along, she was so uninhibited with Alex, so free in her expression of affection, it made me feel like just falling through the floor. I just felt so inadequate. So that was, that was hard, surprisingly hard. 
minutes. I think Alex would way more rather spend 15 minutes with Lindy than you or me. I mean, she's the lightness. That's the problem with her doing the coffee. Couldn't help but be hurt a little bit when he he'd pick somebody to go spend the night with him because you just thought, oh, he'd rather be with her than with me. If you didn't like, if the wives didn't like one another, that would be really hard to do. But when you like each other, um, I don't, then I don't begrudge my friends their time with Alex because I like them too and I want them to be happy. You really do figure out that you can't be her and that, that you'd rather have her be at her best than otherwise mm -hmm. because it does reverberate back to you and it's it's that that somebody else has a nice relationship with Alec is no threat to yours I mean it all it, and it makes you feel bad only when you don't feel up to par yourself mm -hmm. it takes a lot more women to think this way than it does men to live this way in my own family what we got a ratio here you know and it's pretty obvious you know there's one guy thinks like I do oh well we understand why a man might want to have a bunch of women okay but there's a lot more women here that you need to understand why they might want to, you know, have just one man between them. Hey, I'll but you know what? Uh, you're gonna go David. make it. When you hang around a place long enough, you're bound to find yes, yourself what? in some pretty strange situations. Uh, sometimes I wonder if we're crossing the line here. We're on our way to the Joseph's house because they have invited us to attend a sweat lodge. Which would be interesting. Can you show me out the window where the sweat lodge is? Yeah, I like that I can see right outside my window. You can just see the corner of it there and the pile of wood ready to go to burn. The sweat lodge was really the spiritual climax of the whole Confederacy weekend. When's the sweat lodge going to be? Um, it's going to be tonight. I don't know what time they're going to start. It'll probably be sometime after dark. All weekend, we've been trying to get a handle on this Confederacy. They seem to have taken a page from everybody's book. Christian, Jewish, Mormon, pagan, and this sweat lodge is Native American. Have you been to one of these before? A lot of them. happened a lot of times. Oh yeah? Uh-huh. I've never been to one. What's gonna happen here? Um, there's, see all these love rocks? They put a whole bunch of them in the fire, and then everybody goes in there, and then when the love rocks get real, real hot, they stick them in, a, in the middle, and then they pour water on them so a whole bunch of steam rises and it gets real, real hot. Wow. Oh, the, the kids like the sweat. It's kind of an opportunity to <laughs> show how much character you have. It really makes them feel good about themselves when they can stay in there and pit their mind and their willpower against physical discomfort. Around here, one of the things that I appreciate is people are encouraged to develop leadership in their own family. And uh, the Sweat Lodge and other ceremonies like that promote you to develop your own vision rather than following someone else's vision. There's no negative energy that goes on inside of the Sweat Lodge. The hotter it gets, the harder you pray and the more you sing. And, <laughs> and then when you come out, you feel like a million bucks. I haven't seen Alex. I don't think he's gonna be going to the sweat lodge. I'll check on him now, see what he's up to. Hey, Jay, how you doing? Knowing the sweat lodge was such a sacred event, we were really surprised when the Joseph family asked us to put our cameras down and participate in it with them. Did you say that someone would lend me a sheet? Is that is that what the women wear? Mm-hmm. Yeah? I think you'd really enjoy it. I mean, I really Sure, I, I will. I don't know, what am I supposed to wear, a towel? You can Nothing. go naked, yeah, and all you need is a towel. Hey, but I'll you know go what, there. Uh, you're gonna go David, naked. There's birds and stuff. Do you have an extra towel or a sheet for me? It's really small. Um, I can help. I'll find one. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Ma. I'll get one out of my birthday supplies. <laughs> Dave, you gonna sweat? Definitely. I never miss an opportunity to sweat. <laughs> have you sweat before? <laughs> Down here. Yeah. It's a neat experience. You'll love it. That's the way you got to do it, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, Alex is getting all excited. Yeah. I can't see that person. That's right. Me? Mm -hmm. Right? You're just my side. I'll film you filming Irene. Where are you from? 
originally? No, no, right now. <laughs> Thank you. So, I'm getting ready to go. I'm ready to go into the sweat lodge, but it's quite a ritualistic experience, and I'm going with these people that I've been filming for the past few days, and I am too. And uh, sometimes I wonder if we're crossing the line here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's go. Let's rock. Where'd you put that clothes? Hey, Dave. She all toweled up. Well, thanks for the towel. So it was time to say goodbye to our cameras and enter the great unknown. High as 61 percent. Really? Yeah, I feel better. I'm one of the, I'm one of the tough 39. The sweat lodge is more than just sitting there in, in a sauna. It's a very spiritual environment. And we just sat there for a couple of hours just baking in this intense, intense heat. And each person would offer up a prayer or a song or some thoughts and just sort of share whatever was on their mind. The Sweat Lodge was a very revealing experience for the VJs personally, as well as for the unfolding of our relationship with the Joseph family and their community. We put our cameras down and we went inside the Sweat Lodge with them. And spiritually, the Sweat Lodge is a sacred place. So I was worried that maybe we were getting too close to our subjects. But in the end, I realized it only helped us to understand the Josephs much better. Next on Eyewitness. In a family with eight wives and 21 children, the Joseph women show us what it means to be a sister. I am the cycle that instructs mortality. A wife. She moved in as a wife. When you were eight years old? Nine. And a mother. Well, London knows who her mother is and has never called me her mother. <laughs> and Alex surrenders to cancer's most telltale sign. 